I needed a science fair topic. Dad told me to think of something I really like. Cookies! Dad was on board immediately. It's perfect because I like cookies. Dad loves cookies. And Mom makes great cookies. But I wasn't sure where to start. So Dad suggested we do an investigative phase. You guessed it, made a batch of cookies. Hey, it's science! We used the classic Toll House recipe, and we talked about what to test in our experiment. To help us, we made more cookies. Just kidding. We went online to read more. The most helpful article was this Bud Feeds Guide to Making the Ultimate Chocolate Chip Cookies. They tested all sorts of variables, fat, flour, sugars, rising agents, and even dough temperature. We took what they learned about ingredients and combined it with some things we were interested in and designed the experiment. The BuzzFeed folks made over 35 batches, not counting the failed batches. We settled on five. They were baked without confection mode unless noted. Mom was the head baker because she is the best baker when we want consistency. Plus, Dad would eat too many if he was the baker. Batch 1. The control batch is the classic Toll House recipe. Batch 2. Dark brown sugar was substituted for the light brown sugar. We expected that to give a little more complex caramel flavor and darker color. Batch 3. The Toll House recipe was baked in confection mode at 350 degrees. We expected more even browning. Batch 4. The Toll House recipe dough was chilled for 90 minutes in the freezer. We expected less spreading and taller cookies. Batch 5. The Toll House recipe was baked in, in confection mode at 375 degrees. We expected more even browning and less spreading. After the cookies were made and cooled, I would take three random cookies from each batch to measure for spread and height. Then the cookies would be packaged in airtight containers and taken to my mom's work the next day for taste tests. For consistency, all of the tasting was done on the same day after baking. We made data sheets for the baking of each batch and survey sheets for all of the taste testers. Finally, we would look at all the data and try to figure out what it means. Hypothesis means my prediction about what would happen. My hypothesis was that the taste testers would, co would prefer the control batch. There is a reason it's called classic, right? Let's bake some cookies. I helped set out all the ingredients for mom, but she did all the baking. While she baked, she kept notes, and I kept dad out of the kitchen. <laughs> These are the data sheets mom used when working. The biggest observations were... The batches baked without confection mode had inconsistent color and the baking times were longer and more inconsistent. The batches with the convection on had even brown color, the shortest baking times, and most consistent baking times. Quantitative means something that can be measured. We use this scoop to keep them all the same size. They were also all baked on silicone mats for a consistent baking surface. After baking and cooling, Alex took three random samples from each batch and took measurements. For height, he measured the highest point on the cookie. For width, he measured the widest point on the cookie. The results are as follows. If you like thinner cookies, batch four was the thinnest by far at just 10 millimeters. That was surprising because that was the chilled dough batch. The thickest cookie was batch three, 
the lower temperature convection mode batch. It also had the least spread based on the width measurements. That makes sense. The cookie with the most spread was batch 4, which was the thinnest, so that makes sense as well. Qualitative means something that can't be measured. They are observations described by words. Taste is an example of something that is qualitative. Hey, that's the cookie. We had 40 taste testers from my mom's work. They filled out survey sheets about preferences, experience baking, cookie appearance, and taste. These are the sheets for the taste testers. That's a lot of data. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> The most important part was each taste tester had to rank the batches in order. A ranking of one meant it was their favorite. A ranking of five was for their least favorite. Before I show you the results, do you have a hypothesis about which cookie tasted the best? I'll give you a moment to decide. I'll give you a hint. The highest rated tasting cookie was not the highest ranked based on appearance. No matter which cookie you picked, someone agreed with you. This is my presentation board. I show more details on all the data here. Every batch had multiple people rank them in each spot for both taste and appearance. So the initial look at the data taught us three things. One, all the cookies were good. Two, there are a wide range of preferences about cookies. Three, people's preferences on appearance did not closely match their preferences on taste. But when we averaged all the ratings together, the winner on taste was... Batch 5, the classic Toll House recipe baked with the confection on at 375. Here are the full taste results. Batch 2 finished on bottom. Notice the results are pretty tight with only 0 0.87 separating first from last. On appearance, there was a clear winner. Batch 1, the control batch. The bottom appearance finisher was batch 3, confection mold on at 350. We learned a lot, but here are the main conclusions. Batch 1 was the clear appearance winner, but ranked 4th on taste in a close race. My hypothesis was disproved. But that's okay. It's science. Batch 2, the dark brown sugar did result in more browning, but this batch ranked lowest on taste. Batch 3, we got the more even browning that we were expecting, and it also had the least amount of spread. Batch 4, despite being chilled, this was the flattest cookie with the most spread, that was not what we were expecting. Batch 5. This batch was the taste winner. Confection mode on at 375. Confection mode definitely provided more consistent and faster baking. If yours has it, I recommend using it. Dad says we need lots more cookie experiments. And mom told me, congratulations, and I am the new head baker. Let's see how those cookies are looking. The second hardest part, waiting for them to cool. The hardest part, keeping dad away from him. In future experiments, I plan on cooking them all with convection mode on. And next time, I will design it so that only a single variable is tested, 
Like five batches, where the only thing change is the sugar. That will keep it simpler and easier to identify trends. I need to say thank you to the following for helping me with my science project. Mom, thanks for baking all of those cookies and rounding up the taste testers. Thanks to the taste testers too, of course. Dad. Thanks for helping me sort for the data and not ruining my experiment by eating too many cookies. To BuzzFeed for the great article. To the Northern Crops Institute for inspiring this project. And thank you for watching along. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for helping me do my science project.